So today we're going to go over a few main topics. So I'll just briefly go through the agenda for you all uh, to keep you in check. So we're going to, of course, start off with a quick introduction of myself, our colleague Connie, who's joining me. Um, and then we'll give you a quick background of Dimension, some of the employees and some of the main processes and projects that we work on. Uh, next, we'll dive right into the project, the print to product workflow. So the actual machines and the equipment to get the job done um, and everything that is entailed within that. After that, we're going to go right into the hardware and processes. So we'll dive a little bit deeper into the actual um, chemistries, the technical stuff behind the details and how it actually happens and why it works so well. And the next is the big one here, which we're actually going to introduce the brand new color line for MJF Colors. Um, really exciting for us and of course exciting for the market and industry, industry as a whole. Really opens up great new pathways for everyone. And then lastly, uh, we're going to bring Connie back. Connie is going to join me uh, periodically throughout the presentation and then we're going to bring her right back for some of the questions and answers for everyone. We'll have plenty of time for a lot of questions, so please don't be shy. Um, but to kick it off, I'm going to start by introducing ourselves and then I'll do a quick survey poll right after that. All right, so my name is Michael Shore. I'm the head of application consulting for the Americas. I'm based out of Baltimore, as I mentioned. My background is heavy in additive manufacturing for about seven plus years. Um, and I actually grew up in a manufacturing environment through automotive. Uh, I spent several years there growing up. And then I worked a lot of years in the aerospace and defense industries, transitioned those into the consumer goods sector uh, through some of the major marketing brands and sport apparel brands. And then and now I get to tie it all together with Dimension. And I'll pass it off to Connie to introduce herself. Hi guys, I'm Connie and, oh, sorry. <laughs> and uh, welcome uh, to our webinar. I'm currently sitting in our lab. Um, I'm part of the R&D team at Dimension. And my main job is to, um, to work all the color related topics. So if you want to do color matching on everything regarding uh, new color lines, that's my job. Excellent. Thank you, Connie. Well, so you've met Connie and myself. We've understood a little bit about you guys. So now let's talk about the rest of our team. Um, this is a quick photo. We do this every year with our team as we continually grow, uh, exponentially grow, as I should say. So uh, we were started in 2015 with only a handful of folks and quickly grew from there. And currently we're well over 60 people already nearing the 70 mark. Uh, we have two facilities. Our headquarters is outside of Munich, Germany, and we are opening up our facility in Austin, Texas right now. Um, and of course, everything we do is all centered around that end use product and how we turn raw printed parts into high value products. Some of those main areas that we focus in, as you can see some of the visuals here, just helps but understand it. Um, we have automotive sector. We have, of course, huge market in the consumer goods section, as you can see with the high fashion jewelry, footwear and eyewear. Uh, we even have a couple of industrial and really important medical applications, which have very specific and unique requirements that need to be met. So it's a really exciting area to jump into. Um, but again, this is just a visual to help you kind of understand some of the areas of applications. <clears throat> All right, so enough about the history. Let's jump into the real fun stuff here. So let's go a quick overview of our printer product workflow. Again, this is all the industrial equipment that is used for the process. So a good visual here for everyone to understand um, of how industrial these setups really are and what they can really enable you to achieve in your, in your workflow. Um, the couple of systems on your left hand side there are your power shot systems. These are all mechanical blasting systems. Of course, we have cleaning systems and then we go into the surfacing, which are the center two systems, mechanical blasting systems or a chemical vapor fuse smoothing system. And then lastly, we all, of course, offer our DM60, which is where we're going to put a lot of our energy into today. So to better understand um, what that process looks like, it's, it's relatively just three steps. Uh, there's a cleaning step, a surfing step, and a coloring step. Cleaning is always priority number one. Uh, you have to have clean parts. Without clean parts, the rest of the processes really just don't work well. No matter how you, well you go from that point on, you really need a clean part to start everything. And that goes with any end use application you have across the board or any material you ever use. So PowerShot C is where we started a lot of our energy to understand of how we create that first and quality driven result from a clean part coming off your printer. The middle section are your two different surfacing options that we offer uh, mechanical surfacing through the PowerShot S, which is currently the fastest approach to a, a surface treatment in the market today. 
Um, we can process almost an entire build in about 10 minutes or less. It gives a really beautiful haptic and homogeneous finish on the part. If you want to push the limits a little bit more, we can offer the vapor fuse surfacing, which is an industrial setup, of course, producing incredible results for sealed, chemically smooth surfaces. Um, these are really incredible opportunities for the medical environment or automotive and other, a few other applications that enable, um, again, enable users to really see different potentials with 3D printing. And then of course, the last step is always in that coloring phase. Um, so the coloring is really where we put all of our energy in the beginning. And then of course, as Di mentioned, as you can imagine, we are the house of color. Um, we bring everything to life through that. So we're gonna launch again into the HP side of things today. So we'll try and focus all of the efforts there. So just a few verticals that we um, put a lot of the effort into and from where a lot of our consumer base is right now. Uh, as you can see, the consumer section is relatively large. We have big customers like Under Armour and Fitz Frames. So applications that see um, firsthand customer interactions. So whether it's touching skin, so cytotoxicity needs, or if it's uh, multiple parts, so every part has to match perfectly. There's a lot of really unique needs that need to be met here in the consumer section. Moving into medical, automotive, and industrial, these are really specific certifications that are unique to those uh, industries. And then the enablers for the entire market, so the contract manufacturers, that's really where the volume is pushed out to the industry. And really where it just brings the knowledge to the public and what's available. Um, so these are just a few of the names that we have on board with us. All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty of the, the technical side of things. So we're gonna go dive right into the hardware and the processes of the system themselves. So to start, we're gonna talk strictly about the DM60 here. DM60 is currently the leading coloring solution in the industry for AM. It is a completely closed system. So the user interaction is minimal, if at all. Um, it does offer a near limitless color solution. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. And of course, we have Connie here to help answer some of the questions if you have any towards it. We are able to match exact formulas and we can keep those formulas consistent. And we'll talk about that in the next slide with, about the cartridges and how we control that process. But some of those uh, special sectors and verticals, um, we do have incredible amounts of ISO certifications available almost across the entire color range and a few different materials put on that. So we can hit those different needs. And the cool thing is all of these processes are completely hands off and it's a process of only about two and a half hours from raw part to color finish part at the end. And for the batch size of things, um, we can roughly fit almost an entire mid-size MJF build in there. So with your 4200 series, your 5200 series, or most of the users are on this presentation, that's what you have in your office or facilities. And just imagine almost a full build of that being processed in about two and a half hours. So let's take a cool little snapshot and visual into what's happening inside the DM60. So in this cycle, the best way to describe it is it's a water bath cycle that's using heat and pressure to enable the chemical reaction of the process. So as you can see here, um, there's color infiltrated into the part under a full water bath cycle. As I mentioned, the full limitless color range of opportunities for you all. What's happening is it's actually chemically binding with the part, allowing a penetration depth of almost 200 microns. And of course that it could be dependent on densities or materials, but that's what you should expect to see. The process is fully reproducible and traceable. As I mentioned, we do have quite a few ISO certifications around the colors and it's completely geometry agnostic. So because it's a water bath cycle, it doesn't really matter what you throw in there as long as it's not a completely sealed off pocket. As long as the water and the dye can get there, it's going to achieve color. As you can see here, some of the end products, um, we can focus in the SLS world, the MJF world, and the different finishes that are uh, available to those specific parts too. <clears throat> so to speak a little bit more about color itself, uh, for those who don't know, this particular process is a chemical reaction of how you add color to it. So it's an additive color base. The image on the right hand side of your screen here, um, it's just a good visual to understand and interpret color ranges and how it actually works. So you have your LAB values. So the L value uh, ranges from your zero to 100. That's really just your white and black scale. So it's understanding what that base material could be. The B values are from your blue to yellow scale and your A values are your green to red scales. So wherever that particular color code might lie is within that particular range. And that's how you can understand what that envelope of opportunity might be for you. What you really should gain out of this is that the base color 
is very much your de uh, depending factor on what you can achieve in the end result. So if you have a really white part, like your SLS powder bed parts right now, you have a huge opportunity because that base platform is white. It's like painting on a white canvas. Where the MJF side of things, it's of course a gray part. So it's really, um, it's nearly impossible to achieve a lighter part than the gray that comes off the printer. So you can always achieve that spectrum after that. So you can always get darker. Um, so it's just a really good understanding of what you should really take away from this thing here. So as we talked about before about the reproducibility and the hands off of the machines themselves, so this is the DM60 and the cartridge that's around it. What's really exciting about it is a fully automated cleaning cycle built into the process. And there's also opportunities for cleaning cycles after the short cleaning cycles. So you can really go from color to color to color in the same day without huge steps in between or changing up machines or processes. It's completely hands off and all you're doing is scanning a cartridge, loading parts and just pressing go. The color based cartridge system is what enables that hands off approach and allows you to move and transition from color to color and also material to material because it has an RFID chip in it that controls all those processes and parameters. They're available in multiple sizes, so you can still hit some of your targets for your cost per part based on if it's small all the way up to extra large volumes. Those volumes are based around, of course, surface area and also volume of the part because it is a water bath cycle, so we do have to understand water displacement in there. Looking a little deeper into the cartridge and what that reproducibility means is that that RFID chip encompasses a few major things. So we have to, of course, know what material it is. So what are we trying to achieve and what are we aiming for? It's what finish does that material have to start so we can understand what type of results we should expect based on the densities or surface qualities that are coming out of it. A lot of times the process is also very important. So understanding your print strategies, what orientation the part might have been or where within the build chamber so we know what type of heat thermal or thermal heat effects it might see so we can understand what results we should expect going out of it. What's also really important to understand because it's an RFID chip, we measure everything down to the microgram. So if something does go wrong, for instance, we can actually trace it all the way back to the recipe in the lab and understand if it was something from the, the dye pigment themselves or a chemical process or all the way down. We can really trace and find the result or the issue very quickly. <clears throat> so understanding what can be done through the DM60 process and understand what avenues it can focus your efforts into. Um, we did start everything around SLS technology so your base white powders, of course. We did explore the other side of things, so the resin-based side of things. Through a lot of our developments, of course, folks are coming to us with resin-based applications. So we've understood that we can achieve certain colors to the resin. But again, everything we're focusing on today is gonna to be around this MJF. So this is a really exciting thing because MJF is really growing in the market right now. So the PH12 is what we're focused on the energy into right now, just because it's the highest volume currently from that process. Um, but these are just some of the pathways that the M60 can enable color to that approach. All right, let's get into the fun stuff and the launch of the brand new color line. <clears throat> First, we'll start talking about what the evolution of colors look like. So what we started with and where we're moving towards next. So as I mentioned before, we started everything on that SLS platform. So that white powder base where it was a little bit easier to approach, but not really anyone had a, a good um, production line or volume consistency moving into color. So we launched 17 basic colors. These were just for red, green, blues, the basics. There wasn't specific color codes associated to them. It was just understanding that you could achieve color through it. After that, we understood the need for specific colors. So seasonal palettes or unique um, customer needs or corporate colors, things like that. So we understood color matching was a huge approach for us. After that, we understood that we need to push even further. We need to go past that envelope. So we launched almost a full line of the Ryle and Pantone color code matches. So these are specific color codes that are off the shelf ready to go. So if you know what that color code is, you can just order it through us. And for the most part, we have, I believe it's just around 200 available colors. So it's a huge amount of opportunity there. For some of those specific industries, um, these have their unique requirements of UV stability or even neon colors, which just opens up new opportunities in the consumer goods section. We actually designed special cartridges for these ones that have UV stability within that dye mixture to enable it to pass certain ISO standards that are needed in the automotive industry, for instance. So the neon side of things, it was just a really exciting thing because neon color is just, you can't do that in a pot dyeing method, for instance. Um, so it just opened up new avenues in the consumer section. This past year, we understood that HP 
printers were really taking over in the market space. So we launched and we put all of our effort into understanding how we can achieve vibrant colors with grade based parts. So Khan is we're going to bring in just a second here to help answer some questions around it. Um, we put a ton of energy into developing the base colors to what can be available. So here's a quick little exciting snippet so you can understand just looking at this, it's really vibrant, a lot of excitement behind it. And what's even cooler is taking this image, for instance. So you have that gray part in front. So this is your base part off that printer. Looking behind it, it's just endless opportunities of color. Think about what you could achieve through some of these new color ranges. And it's really exciting to understand what, what can be opened up here. What sector could you want to go into now, now that you have an ability to hit color ranges. So these are the 17 base colors that we're going to be launching. Um, as you can see on the left hand side of your screen, those are the actual parts we've been measuring against and these are consistent color results already. If you're thinking about this, maybe in the pot dye method you've been able to achieve some of those first couple colors, your dark colors, your black, your ash, your stone. Not those names of course, but something close enough that might look like that and you might get some consistencies, but chances are out of every hundred parts, if you were to actually scan min, your delta E values would be absurd. Um, so this is really where we found a unique opportunity for us to dive into it and create that consistent, reliable result every time. So let's uh, let's actually bring Connie in to help me answer some of these special questions around this and help describe it a little bit more. So Connie, why did we develop a, a special new color line? Um, yeah, well, um, the answer is similar for all our color lines. Um, our customers want to be flexible with their color choices to react to um, market requirements and they wanted to have all those color choices on every material and we had like a high demand on color options for MGF and that's our answer for our customers um, you know the HP fusion technology offers so many benefits like uh, high performance and uh, improved mechanical properties and a lot of more different um, advantages but it has a big disadvantage and that's the gray color of the part and that limits the application for our customers and to enable those possibilities we extended this multiple color uh, lines especially designed for mgf parts excellent and that's exactly right so we saw that need in the market space right we understood that SLS had the, the industry space for a long time, MJF relatively new into the space. It's incredibly fast, the market now, and it's really starting to take over. So we need to find a solution for it because as Connie just mentioned, there's a need. So we always develop towards the need of what the industry wants and what customers actually want. So that's why we developed the color line around the gray based material. So as I mentioned in the previous slides, we have hundreds of colors available. So what's, what makes this unique? Why is this a special line? Uh, well, um, such a wide range of colors was, they weren't available on the market for MGF parts uh, until now. And this enables, as I said, numerous application possibilities and makes actually MGF parts more lucrative and more applicable if you have color. And since you have this gray uh, surface, the attempt to do this, as you said, with um, pot dyeing did not work out. So this process is inconsistent and you can't uh, um, achieve a uniform result if you have uh, pressure fluctuations as you have with pot dyeing and also imprecise recipes as you have with pot dyeing. And that's why we applied our method. And using this method, our workflow, our whole workflow, as well as adjusting the recipes to MGF parts, we achieve a high uh, and deep penetration of the dye stuff into the part. And that's why we have this high quality and colorful uh, results. And another special thing of our um, new uh, process or new um, color line is that you don't need any new machines. So if you're our customer, and you already have a workflow, or at least at M60 and at PSS, you can use this new product, but you, you're still, um, you don't have to limit yourself to this kind of printer. You can use also an SLS printer uh, because you can dye 
um, white parts as well as those gray parts. Yeah, that's an excellent answer, Connie. And a couple major points to take away from that. Uh, let's start with the first one. There's no change to the equipment that you have. As long as you, of course, you have the DM60 and the PowerShot S, um, and even the PowerShot C, there's no change in your, your machines or equipment. There's no special software updates or program changes or equipment or manufacturing changes at all. Everything's the same. The only thing that changes is that die cartridge. And that's really point number two is that recipe. What's so unique, as Connie was describing, it's it's not just uh, mixing red and blue together and hoping you get purple and put it into a, a crock pot and maybe you can dye an MGF part, but most likely you're not going to get the same results over and over and you're definitely not going to get the right penetration level. So that color is going to rub off. Um, so we used our incredible process to really guarantee us some great results. So thank you, Connie. And lastly, uh, for what everyone might be asking now is what's next? How do you actually get started into this phase? Um, yeah, well, we wanted to launch something, as you said, reliable, and that's why we want to work with you guys, because you are the experts in printing. We are focusing on the processing of the parts, so we need your expertise to get the best parts out of the printer to get a reliable uh, result. So if the part is bad, as you all know, the product will be bad afterwards, even though you process it. So what we need from you guys um, are the following requirements. If you want to participate in our beta test, you should have a, a HP Jet Fusion printer from the 4000 and 5000 or 5000 series, so the 4200 or the 5200, and at least a DM60 and a PSS so you can process the parts as we did in our development. We will provide you with all the other parts that you need, all the other components, such as evaluation sheets, maybe a test geometry, the cartridges, everything will get to you in time. And then um, you will have to, um, um, you can, if you're interested, you can send us an email at hello at dimension.com and we will respond. As soon as possible. Excellent. Yeah, that's a good thing to note is that we are a post processing company. We have all of our energies put into the post process. So we do rely heavily on the market and the industry and, and the participants like you all here um, to help us get there better. So we have to go through some of these phases, the beta phases, some of the struggles, because we have to understand where we fail in order to succeed better. Um, so uh, just a visual to understand what Connie was talking about that right now. So we have begun the beta phase currently. <laughs> And we do have some of those requirements. Of course, you should have the MJF printer, so the 42 or 5200 series that produces those gray parts that we're trying to add color to. And of course, in order for you to add color successfully, we do ask you to have the PowerShot S and the DM60. Uh, the reason we have the PowerShot S on there is to help achieve the surface characteristics that we actually want and help rely, uh, get us that reliable result every time and repeatable um, processes. Currently, we do have color samples that are available on request. These are the color fans. Um, and again, we will be beginning this and launching this into the market very soon. So looking in the July timeframe. Um, and again, we're in that phase right now. So we're really excited. We've seen hundreds of parts already come through that are really just vibrant and exciting. Um, so we're super pumped about this. And I think you all should be. Um, it's an entirely new opportunity in the market. So. That's one really cool thing. Uh, you can read more about the rest of our exciting developments over the years through some of our white papers. Um, we just recently did a couple of webinars and launched the white paper around pot dye versus the deep dye coloring system, understand the advantages of the DM60 and why it's so much more efficient and a better process. We also have special white papers around the automotive sector, understanding what that special requirement is and how we achieved it. And then of course, for the 580 series or the full color printers off MJF, um, we do have a white paper on that and how we develop color ranges for there. And that's based off of that printer printing in a white based material. So a little bit of a different method to get there, um, but it's very specific towards the 580 full color printer. Uh, again, please don't hesitate to ask questions to us. Um, all my contact details are here and Connie as well. Um, you can always reach out to us directly, email, phone, or to, as Connie said, our hollow at Dimension. And for now, we are pretty much wrapped up here. 